Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mighty God you are. Blessed be the name of the Lord God, who is worthy to be praised. We bless your holy name. You're worthy of the praise, the honor, and all the glory. Hallelujah. Blessings to everyone as you're coming in the room. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Our setup is a little different tonight. So I don't have my phone right in front of me. And so please beg my pardon <laughs> if I don't get the names right. <laughs> to God be all the glory, the honor, and the praise. We are yet alive. We are still in the land of the living on purpose, under the purpose of Almighty God. If you're here, you got something to do. There's a work for you to do, amen? And, and tonight, I believe that God has allowed us to assemble, that his name may be lifted up and his name may be glorified. I bless God for all of you coming into the room tonight. And I want you to hit that love button, hit that share button tonight. And allow other people to come into the zone, come into the sphere. God bless you tonight, Minister Sunshine God, Minister Tracy Williams. God bless you, Latoya and Carla. Mary Pyatt, God bless you, my God, Mary. Lockett, God bless you. Baron Bastian, God bless you, my beloved. Delory Williams, God bless you. Come on and hit that share button tonight. We're all about sharing the love of God. We're all about sharing the gospel to the four corners of the earth. We're on the mandate. We're on the mission, hallelujah, of the Lord God Almighty to go into all the world and to preach the gospel. For many of us, we can't go to the ends of the earth, but we can hit the share button tonight. Glory be to God. I'm here tonight to encourage some people who have been tested, who have been tried, and who have been found faithful. <laughs> I'm here to encourage some people tonight not to look at the watch, not to look at the clock, not to look at the calendar but to trust God in everything that you're going through. I'm in a night to bless God with you because your victory is on the way to your house. Come on. I'm here to confirm some things in your spirit tonight. Glory be to God. God bless you, my beloved. Lady Talia. I don't think it's a camera, Talia. What is happening? We're using a different setup tonight. And I don't have my phone right in front of me. We're using a tripod that is off for me. So in... in, in What's the word? In zooming in, we're losing pixels. And so that's why it kind of looks a little cloudy. Joshua, you want to come and wipe up the camera see if that's going to help? I don't think it's going to help, though. That's just how it is when you zoom in. <laughs> I, I, uh, my mini tripod, it broke. And so I'm waiting on a replacement in the mail. It hasn't gotten here on time. But we thank God. You're all on time. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Mighty God. I believe tonight there's some of you saying, Lord, I've been waiting to get a word. I need a word specifically to my situation. I need a word specifically designed for me, God, to uh, set me free, to bring me out, to set me up into something greater. I believe tonight that the Lord has heard the cries of your heart. I believe that God has put me on a mission tonight. Hey, I'm Messiah. He's put me on a mission. Amen. And, and, and the Lord's will shall be done in the midst of us tonight. Come on. Come in with your praise. Come in with worship. Begin to magnify God. Begin to glorify Him. Begin to thank Him for all that He is and all that He has done and all that He is doing. Can I tell you, God is always doing something. God bless you, Brother Alan Bell. God is always moving. God bless you, um, Minister Gosha in Florida. You know, God is always doing something, even when it seems as if nothing's happening. There is a move beyond the natural realm. The natural realm, it, it, it messes you up because it's something that you can see and something that is tangible. And, and most people who don't understand faith and how faith works and how it's important that every believer is, uh, as we are given the measure of faith, to utilize our measure of faith and yet pray that God increase our faith because the just shall live by faith. Faith is our access card. Faith, it gives us 
that push in the spirit. That even when we don't see what has been purported or what has been prophesied or that which has already been declared, we still believe it. I need some people on the line tonight that will say, woman of God, I still believe. Come on, say, I still believe. Can I tell you there have been some dumbfounding, mind-blowing miracles that have been taking place all around us. Amen. Testimonials have been coming and everybody doesn't want their testimony out there even though I don't put the names. Some people just want to um, have their testimony in seclusion for whatever reason. But the Bible says that we overcome him, Satan, by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. When God does something, it is a, it's under our responsibility to let the earth run. No, God just did something over here. God just did something over there. He's moving in the south. He's moving in the north. Hallelujah. And what it does is it sets off... Uh, what you call a cataclysmic event. It sets off a chemical reaction in the spirit realm. Things begin to happen, not just over your region, not just in your sphere and atmosphere, but it sets off bombs. Literally, spiritual um, um, explosions taking place. The exousia and the dunamis of God working on behalf of God's people. Things begin to happen everywhere. Hallelujah. You know, we don't just want breakthroughs happening in one state or in one country or in one part of the world. We need breakthroughs in every facet, in every area, in every country, in everybody's life. Who even was attached to this prayer, uh, this prayer uh, uh, outreach tonight? Everybody needs a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Sometimes for some people a breakthrough is getting a break. A break from everything and everyone. Getting a break from the routine, from, from the humdrum, from the job, even from people we get to see every day. Sometimes you just need a break. My God. You just need a break. And then sometimes breakthrough comes in a way that God meets your need. It comes in a way that God opens a door. It comes in a way that God shuts down the plans of the enemy. Breakthrough can manifest in many different facets in your life tonight. And even at this woman of God is worshiping in the song. I want you to focus in your spirit on the thing that you've been believing God for. Because I'm going to be coming in agreement with you tonight. That what you have been believing God for, that it shall come to pass swiftly. That it shall spring up swiftly. That you shall see it in the now. And you shall not be defeated. And you shall not be overcome. Because God is your God. Come on somebody, say amen tonight. You shall not be overcome. Hallelujah. You gotta know of a truth that everything that God purposed to come to pass in your life, it shall and it will come to pass. Glory be to God. No matter what it looks like. Wait, I'm answer Joshua. Come quickly. I need your laptop because this isn't connecting to the internet. Always something. I don't know how to turn it on. It's not it's not finding the Wi-Fi. My God tonight, I rebuke every plan of the enemy. God bless you, Pastor Johnny Fox. God bless you, God bless you, man of God. Caressa Hall, God bless you. Tina Lowe, God bless you, mighty woman of God, prophetess Tina Lowe, and the mighty work that you have been assigned on the earth to do in this season. Woman of God, be encouraged and stay strong in the Lord. Um, um, Pastor Tina Lowe, prophetess Tina Lowe, and then I see God doing a new level of networking, amen? A higher tier, a new level of people coming into your sphere and in your space for outreach in the, in, in, in the earth realm. I see God using you in enterprising ways in this season, enterprising in business. Uh, breakthrough for people through business tactics, new strategies. Amen. The body of Christ needs a diverse form of people. I believe that's why God has the fivefold. Because he wanted his people to be fully covered. He wanted us to have everything encompassing us. He didn't want us to have a lack. He didn't want us to... He didn't want us to be in a place where we, we were in need of anything. So spiritually, of course, he's going to want to make sure that we are in the place that we need to be in him. Amen. And so now as we're coming together, woman of God, I see God doing a phenomenal work through you in a, in a, on the level of entrepreneurship in an enterprising way in this season. Uh, I see many non-profits coming together. I see meetings. Um, Prophet is Tina Lowe. And I see God giving you the wisdom and knowing which one of these people, because they're gonna, it's gonna be all almost like an octopus. Every every tentacle is gonna, these people are gonna be reaching for you. But God will give you wisdom on which ones to connect with and which ones to sever. This is a very an intricate season for you, and you have to be definitive in your movements because things will begin to happen quickly. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord God tonight. Somebody begin to raise a praise and bless the name of the Lord. Come on and honor God tonight. Come on and worship him. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Come on and give him the praise, the honor, and the glory. There is no God like our God. Come on. You know he is everything that we need him to be. He has worked it out already. He has opened the door already. Come on, somebody. God bless you, my daughter, Monette Virgil, Sh Charlie Sawyer. I bless you in the name of the Lord. You and my spirit, even on today. Praise the name of the Lord. As I sat in the prayer room, it was a different experience for me today in the prayer room. God began to affirm and confirm some things. And these are the things in the now. There are times when God will speak prophetically to a prophet. But the things that God is speaking in that moment is, is for a season to come. But the things that God is giving me is for the now. It's for the now. Some things are about to move forward for his people. God is moving obstacles out of the way of his people. You know, it's so, it's so simple sometimes. You can be on the verge of something great and all of a sudden, just like going down a road, there's a tree trunk falling across the road and, and you stop. You're like, God, but I can't drive over it. It's too big for me to get up and move. So you reverse and go the next way. When in fact, your job is to stop and say, God, I need strategy. I need strategy to give me leverage to move the obstacle that's in front of me. Come on, somebody. The power that's on the inside of you. Uh, uh, come on, you've got to rise in this season, people of God. It's time out for us turning around and going the next way when an obstacle comes. When we see the enemy put up a sign and say, restrict it. There are no restrictions on the people of God. Not in 2020. My good God from Zion. This is the year of acquisition. In order to acquire anything, it means that God is giving you access to it. My God, the enemy can't challenge you when God has opened up doors. These doors are open and no man has the power to close them. Somebody better begin to rejoice and give God the glory tonight. Come on and bless the Lord your God. He is worthy of the praise. Come on. He's worthy of the glory. Come on. Hallelujah, Jesus. Woo. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Here I'm answered the man that. I'm here to let you know God is for you. And if God be for you, it matters not to be against you. Come on, it's your moment to celebrate. Come on, it's your moment to give God the glory and the praise. Mighty God tonight. You've got to know that God alone is God. His name is El Gabor, God of war. Guess what? He don't lose no fight. Woo! You connected to the one who's going to win for life. Come on, somebody. He's a winner every day of the week. Come on. If I was you, I'd tap on the screen tonight. I'm a winner because of who I'm connected to. Come on, that's right. We connected to Almighty Yahweh. Glory to God. And we're going to win in this season. It doesn't matter what comes our way. Glory to God. We're going to win. The season of struggle. The season of demonic hardship. Ah, uh, come on. It's over. Come on, somebody. You got to know that when God does a work, it is perfectly done. That when God does something, it, is, it cannot be tested. It cannot be contended with because it's God Almighty. Woo! God is orchestrating some things in this hour. People of God, put your spirit to be in tune with what the Lord is doing. Keep yourself in a place to hear from God. Keep your, yourself in a, in a place where you will not be distracted. Well, the enemy will not be able to walk all over you. Come on, somebody. It's time to rise up. Take territory. Jabez prayed a prayer. It was simplistic in nature, but God gave him what he wanted. He said, our Lord God, that you would bless me indeed, that you would enlarge the place of my territory. He said, God, let your hand be upon me and for good. Lead me away from all evil and temptation, that there is no pain caused in my life. And the Bible says, and God gave Jabez what he asked of him. I'm here to let you know tonight that God is going to give you what you've asked of him. God bless you tonight. Our beloved bishop is in the room. And then he worked hard today. He's coming in with a limp. My good God from Zion. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Glory be to God. Making sure he's all right over there. Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. I call breakthrough in your life tonight. Glory, glory. I prophesy breakthrough over you tonight. Yes. That's the Patricia Charlton, woman of God, daughter of Zion. Almighty oh, God. I cover you tonight under the power of the blood of Jesus. Mighty, mighty God. Glory, God. I see you on late in late night conversations on the telephone. Ramanda Ban Soto and the Bian Soto and the Bian Saya. Yeah. Oh, glory to God. I don't pray. Amen. <laughs> glory to God. Ramanda Soto and the Bian Saya. Uh, oh my God, I see somebody, this is Pastor Patricia Charlton. I see somebody's trying to win your affection. 
trying to win your heart. And I hear the Lord say, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. God said, make no quick movements. I don't know. This person is trying to, to interfere. It sounds right. But it, but it isn't right. Stand still, woman of God. Let God be God over you, Pastor Patricia, child in the night. Don't make no false moves. Don't make no ill connections. Wait on the Lord. I cancel every plan of the enemy of the what we, what we call in the spirit, the merry-go-round spirit. I decree and declare over you, Pastor Patricia Charlton, that you will not go in this season back around the merry-go-round. Raman's high. It's time for you to go northward and go up. In other words, you're coming into the place of an inheritance. In other words, you're coming into the place that God has designed for you. And in order to get there, that means that the things behind you need to die off. The things behind you need to die out. And to move forward into the place of newness, then you have to wait on God to guard you in order to take territory. In other words, you need to be equipped for the next move. Come on. But I'm sorry, I'm I see God putting you on a spiritual mandate of fasting and prayer and consecration. I see God putting you in a place of purification and pruning. And I see God waking you up in the midnight and speaking to you profoundly. And I see dreams and visions and I see you penning certain things as a reminder of what the Lord has spoken. And there are yet two things, amen, from the times that you used to write that are still outstanding. And God says the year 2020 is the year for, of fulfillment of those last two things that you have written in the previous season. Pastor Patrinka Charlton. There are many nights it's almost as if you can feel a presence as you lay on the bed this way, a presence on the right hand side. I'm going to be honest with you. There is angelic escort over you, but literally the presence of the Lord hovers. On the right side of your room, ribbon sacorium and see under the higher. And in the season that is coming, woman of God, I hear the Lord say, She will rise and hear the call. She will rise and run to the call of God. For you, it is not over, it has just begun. And how the Lord Himself will lay hands upon you and use you to do a great work in the earth realm. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither have it entered the hearts of men the things that God has prepared for you, woman of God. Hold fast and watch the power of God be displayed in and through your life tonight. Pastor Patrinka Charlton, glory be to God. We're getting ready to pray. Bishop is in the room tonight and we're approaching the eight o'clock hour and I like to keep things in rhythm, amen, by the spirit of the Lord. Deidre Hall, I haven't, I haven't seen you on the live in a long time, but Deidre, I hear the Lord say, no longer will you have to, to pinch pennies in this season. No longer will you have to rely on the, only that which is coming in that has been streamlined. God said he's opening up the windows of heaven and pouring you out blessings. Hallelujah, that you don't have room enough to receive. I don't know, but I see you in two banks, amen. I see you in one beginning with N and I see you in one beginning with R. Amen. And I see God giving you favor in both banks. Glory to God. God said this is a season. <clears throat> Amen. He's going to bless the work of your hands. He's going to bless and enrich you in this season. And I see you going on a cruise, amen, with looking like everybody in the family, amen. And I see God doing something special for you, even as you are traveling. God said to tell you, he's covering you, amen. He is covering you and guarding you. He is keeping you, hallelujah. God said, even in your body, he's keeping you strong. The joy of the Lord is your strength, DJ Hall. Eba Tabande. I cover your home under the blood of Jesus. The front door, the back door. I plead the blood of Jesus over your house now. That no man will be able to break in and steal from you and nothing of your possessions, Deidre Hall. I see like a string of robberies in the area. And I see the person on the left and on the right of you, Oram and say again, hit. And like they're going to come to your front door and your back door, but they won't be able to get in. For the seal of the Lord is upon your house. In Jesus' name. Come on, somebody, help but praise God on tonight. Come on, somebody, begin to glorify God on tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, Raman de Rebi on Sundar Makoya. Bishop, you know, so I need to see over there. But we're we going we to pull it through. 
In that man so do not go in that man so do not go in so far away. God bless you tonight, my son Ray. Ray seen son just now and then. Let me help me. That man so. In that man so do not go in that man side. Glory to God. Latoya baby, I want you to do this tonight. Clap your hands. Come on, Latoya baby, right where you are. Clap your hands. Oh, Raman Sakara Ramanda. Come on, clap your hands, Latoya. Don't stop. You keep clapping. Oh, Ramanza, keep on clapping, Latoya baby. Oh, Raman Sandra Ramanda. God says to tell you, He is clearing away every demonic principality that has brought delay to your destiny. You were supposed to be further ahead than you are right now. My God. You were supposed to be further ahead, but the enemy wanted to sidetrack you. He wanted to slow some things down and pull away from what God wanted to be accelerated. But God said he's clearing principality from around you tonight. And from this night forward, you're going to have a smooth flow in everything that you do. God said you will have favor, even in, in what you put your hand to do in terms of W-O-R-K, work. But God said beyond that, the vision of your heart shall spring up in 2020. What you've been called to do in the earth realm, God said, it shall come to pass in this season. I see God setting you in a place of consec a consecrated move before God. Woman of God, what are you saying to me? I'm saying there's going to be a time that God will have you to shut away from everything and everyone. Not that you're upset or angry, but it's going to be moments in God's presence where the phones will be turned off and the television will be turned off and it will just be you and God in an, in an intimacy and a heightened level of worship. God wants to unveil himself to you in a greater fashion, Latoya baby. I hear the Lord say, I've anointed her even from birth and I brought her forth even with power and the favor of God rests on you. It encompasses you. And and God says to tell you, no weapon formed against you will prosper. I see you taking a leap of faith and stepping out. And God said, even as you step on, he's going to be with you. And you shall have good success. Hallelujah. And this new endeavor. And this vision of your heart that you want to do. God said, you're going to have favor to get it done. Glory be to God. The enemy will not exact upon you, nor the son of wickedness afflict you. Latoya, baby. Somebody help her praise God tonight. Hallelujah. We're about to go into the throne room of Almighty God. And we're about to pray. I need the prayer warriors on the line. But before we begin to pray as unto our God, I want you to adorn yourself with anticipation and expectancy. Adorn yourself with the cloak of righteousness. And say, God, if there be any sin in me, God, take it out of be anything that I may have done, said or thought, God, that I didn't know that I sinned in it, God, tonight I repent of it, come on, we go into the throne room in purity, come on, because when we go in purity, we pack in with power, come on somebody, Woo! glory to God, my God tonight, Glory to God. Some of you say, woman of God, I've been waiting on my breakthrough. I've been waiting on my overflow. I've been waiting and I couldn't, I couldn't find it. I couldn't see it. I'm God said to tell you, you're about to lay hold on it. Come on, somebody. Listen, there's some things that even I've been standing in the gap and waiting on God for. I want you to hear me tonight. I want you to hear me. God came through in such a phenomenal way. It's what you call a quote unquote dumbfounding blessing. As we pray tonight, I'm going to begin to pray that whatever it is you need, want, and desire, that it will be released to you in a dumbfounding way. Come on, somebody. A dumbfounding. You know what dumbfounding is? Boom. Whoa. How did that just happen? Dumbfounding. You, you, can't, you can't fathom or understand the origin of what is taking place. You can't fathom how it manifested, how it happened. It, it just dumbfounds you. It puts you in a place like, God, how What's happening? You know, it's like walking into a room and it's filled with people that you know and they shout surprise. Dumbfounded. We weren't expecting it, but it showed up. Mind blowing. Come on, somebody. This is that season for the people of God to stand and with their hands lifted up to receive from God those dumbfounding miracles, those mind blowing blessings. Are you ready tonight? Come on. If you're ready, type in there and say, I'm ready for my blessings. Come on. Them dumbfounding blessings. Those mind-blowing blessings. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. Glory to God. Come on. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yes, God. Before we go into prayer, I want you to declare... Right now, out of your mouth, 
I want you to declare this. I want you to say this. I decree and I declare that I will prosper by the prophetic ministry. I want you to say that seven times. Go ahead and say it. I decree and I declare that I will prosper by the prophetic ministry. Hallelujah. Which means that every prophetic word that has come out of the mouth of a prophet of God to your, to your life, that it's going to prosper you. It's not going to shut you down. It's not going to hold you back. It's going to prosper you. Come on, somebody. The, the power in the mouth of the prophet comes to prosper your life. You cannot be um, in, 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 a, in a connection with a prophet of God and your life is not getting any better. Come on, somebody. There are people that came into the ministry whose lives we say in the Bahamas popped down. Amen. In other words, everything that could go wrong was going wrong. There were some people that were afflicted in their bodies, had spent all of their money, and insurance had collapsed on them. In other words, they had already used up all of, of the, the funds on their, their medical insurance. So now they were in a place that were just depending on God, like the woman with the issue of blood. But one encounter in the presence of God, when they connected one prophetic word, how uh, God the sickness died, they began to live and they began to prosper. There were some people whose marriages had fallen apart and on the verge of divorce. I'm talking about in the courtroom. Oh, really? And one prophetic word from the Lord, Iban Sakaya, saved that marriage. Oh, Rebecca on Saga. There were some people on the verge of being evicted from their homes. I mean, long-term properties, but had to remortgage after they paid it off. And what had happened? They, they were in a place of financial detriment. One word from the Lord changed their status forever. I'm here to let you tonight that you're about to prosper by the prophetic ministry that is attached to your life. God bless you, Minister Rika Manis. We know that um, our beloved um, Minister Rachel Dame, she is uh, traveling. We cover her tonight under the power of the blood. Hallelujah, her and her family. Let me tell you something tonight. Everything that God has purposed for you, in the word of God declares, he says, Believe you the word of the Lord, so shall you be established. You're going to make your way short. You're going to have an assurance. You're going to be established. He said, believe as prophets, so shall you prosper. And this is for somebody on the line tonight. This is going to clear up those questions that you have in your mind. You're going to prosper by the prophetic ministry. Just one prophetic word. Just one encounter. There are people on this line that I've never met before in person. But one prophetic word has changed their life and situation. Come on, Minister Lucretia Logan, I hear the Lord say upward, forward for you in this season. Upward, forward for you in this season. Promotion is coming to you, woman of God. Hallelujah. Not from the east or the west or the north or the south is coming from God. God said he's about to download into you new levels of revelation. And I see a new depth of God being unveiled over you. Mm. I see the Holy Spirit stirring in your spirit. He said, yes, daughter, you're in the right place, but I need you to turn. I need you to do this. I need you to do that. And God said he's going to fine tune your ears, Minister Lucretia Logan. In the earth realm, they have not yet graced you. But God says to tell you that in 2020, he's going to call you into the place of being established in ministry. Hallelujah. And I see people lining up. Oh, Raman Siko, Raman Saya. Let me tell you what it is about the ministry in your belly. It moves in purity. You have clean hands and a pure heart. And it's a level of purity that connects you to God or right inside. You don't have to pray long. You don't have to use those words like many people use. But all the truth, when you open your mouth, God hears you. Minister Lucretia Logan, I call you into the place of your upward forward tonight. In the place of the promotion of Almighty God, you will not be stayed. You will not, listen, there's some things happening around you pertaining to people that you know God says he's going to do some unveiling and allow you to see who they really are. And even as God unveils them to you, be swift to do what the Lord tells you to do. He's going to tell you. He's going to let you hear some things. Minister the preacher Lord. He's going to allow you to see some things. And you've got to move when God says move. Come on somebody. You got to hear God tonight. 
Glory be to God. Come on, we're about to pray. It's after 8 o'clock. Catherine Sanders, get, get ready for the blessing of your lifetime. You've not waited for nothing. Come on, somebody. I decree healing over your body tonight, woman of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, everything the enemy stole from you, I command the enemy to give it back. I decree that you will not be humiliated. You will not be manipulated by any agent of the enemy. I command the works of darkness around you to fall to the ground. Catherine Sanders, in the name of Jesus. I hear the Lord say to tell you tonight that he's surrounding you with a hedge of fire. That the enemy will not be able to permeate or penetrate. Not in this season. God says he's going to keep you covered. You will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say rise early every morning in the next seven mornings. God said anoint the four corners of the room that you sleep in. God said he's cleansing the house. He's cleansing the house. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every spirit yes, that tries to like contend with you, God said, as of tonight, He will contend with them and He will show up in fire to defend you, woman of God. I see great financial release coming to you. Oh, the enemy tried to to do some things to you financially in the former season, but God said, in 2020, you shall be built up. Catherine Saunders, you shall be built up. This is your season to be built up and established financially. Physically, God say your health is being restored. In the Kian Salamandu. I come against any kind of surgical procedure. I call on the surgeons of heaven to begin to move over your body tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Welcome to Donald, I cover you under the blood. Come up and share. Yes, God. We're about to pray. Mighty God tonight. Leban Surya Mansa, Matilda Sanders, God bless you, my beloved. My daughters, Javine and Brianna, I see you on the line. I cover you tonight under the blood. Amen. So miracles. I see seven people on this line. You're about to receive miracles. Miracles. You are one of those people. Javina Gray, you are one of those people. A last name Moss. You are one of those people. You are Lee in your name. L E E. You are one of those people. Brokon Sakatamanso. Ribeben Sakatamanso. Ribansi Ondorobo Saya. Ribben and Tracy Williams, you are one of those people. Rekaman Sokoto. Ishanda Nabokoto. Ribeben Sakatobosa. Ikondobo Soto. Irabaman Soto Ramansea. I hear the Lord say he's rounding up Remanso, Oramanda Rimanso, the enemy Yanaramanso, he's rounding them up, Raman Soko yes. and he's driving them out, Rabakonsa. He's driving the enemy out of your house. He's driving the enemy out of your finances. He's driving the enemy out of your family. Woo! Woo! God, Reman Soko Three people on this line. God said there have been people who've been troubling me on your jobs. And literally, this morning you cried out, you said, God, I need you to move three of you on this line. You said, God, I don't know what else to do. God said, He going to move. He will move for you, and I'm not going to say how, but God says that He's going to move for you. You're going to see it swiftly. One of you, you're working with somebody that when they go home, they have a pentagram, a diagram of a pentagram in the place, in, in, a, in a wooden, uh, it's a wooden frame cut out, a pentagram that connects them to satanic works. And they light candles, in, like this thing is raised up, and it has a spot for like the size of a tea light, a tea light candle, and they place these tea light candles, and they burn these candles, and they summon demons, Rekaman Soria Makaya, and God said to tell you, Hallelujah, so that he is covering you from all the demonic works, so for so they've used these satanic works in every place that they have worked, and they work it for promotion, but God said he's about to pull them up and remove them, even so, the same pit that they want to dig for you, they shall fall into it. This person lives alone. And, and the person that you work with lives alone. Don't work with, don't live with anybody else. If if anybody comes to the house, this thing is picked up, removed, and hidden. But God said to tell you tonight, He is shielding you. My God tonight. God is exposing things in the dark realm tonight. 
He's exposing things in the dark realm tonight. Brown skin care, I have not seen or heard from you in a while. But I hear the Lord saying, blessing, he will bless you. Hallelujah. And I don't know, but I see something to do with the female organs or the female part of your body. The Holy Spirit is going to tell you that he's healing you even now. He's bringing your body into wholeness. Amen. I see like some level of inflammation in this area. And discomfort. I hear the Lord say he's moving over even over your children in this season. Raymond, it's a pieces. Some pieces of a puzzle. They're coming together in your life. Even relational pieces said God. And I hear the Lord say you have looked to the hills when it's come with your help and now God say increase is coming to you increase is coming to you God say he's put a shield about you and hallelujah everything that the enemy purpose to take from you won't be able to get I see some generational land coming to you generational property being released to you glory to God and I see a deed of gift coming to you that's what it says on the paper you turn it on the back it says deed of gift and I see acreages. I see 5.13 acres. 132 acres. 5.132 acres. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. It is your season. Amen. So we walk in it. In the name of Jesus Christ. I see one person trying to be like a master of all, a manipulator. But I cut down that manipulating spirit in Jesus' name. Everything that God purposed for you to have, you're going to have it in 2020. In Jesus' mighty name. Father God, tonight I bring your people. God, you know them by name and by nature. Father God, they belong to you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bow down before your holy altar. We bow down in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. God, we thank you today that you are Adonai. You are El Shaddai. God, we thank you tonight that you are Jaira. That you are Emkadesh. That you are Tiskanu. That you are Nisi. That you are Rohi. That you are Rapha. God, we thank you tonight, hallelujah, that you are El Gaboa, the God of war. God, you work wonders on our behalf. God, we thank you tonight for miracles, signs, and wonders. We thank you, God, that your people shall never be oppressed. Hallelujah, they shall never be suppressed. They will never become depressed in the name of Jesus Christ. God, yes. the enemy has fashioned demonic hours against your people. God, we cancel it tonight in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, we praise you, God, that your people shall elevate God. I yes, praise you today, God, for new heights in the spirit. I Call them into new places in the spirit. Oh God, I decree and declare no weapon formed against them will prosper. No weapon of infirmity will prosper. No weapon of poverty will prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. God, I decree and I declare tonight that every agent of evil that's been assigned against them. God, that their assignment will be rescheduled. And God, it will be rendered null and void in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare, God, that you will anoint your people. God, to take on the high places. Anoint their feet like hinds feet. Yes. God, I decree, God, that you will make their enemies their hewers of wood and their drawers of water. God, I decree and declare that you will make their enemies their footstool. God, I decree and declare, God, in this season that they will take on, hallelujah, everything that you have for them. They will not be denied. God, you said no good thing would you would hold from them yeah. that walk upright. We praise you for the power to walk upright tonight. God, rest it over them like a cloak. Rest it over them like a mantle, Father. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, yes, Father. We Jesus. spread the blood of Jesus over yeah. our family members. God, we spread the blood of Jesus over Hallelujah. our sisters and brothers and nieces and nephews and uncles and cousins and fathers and mothers. Oh, God, we, we spread it thick over grandmothers and grandfathers, God. Yes. Those that need to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We rebuke every mind-blinding spirit. God, the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. God, the harvest is white tonight. Yes. It is past ripe. Father, tonight we call them out of the kingdom of darkness, into the kingdom of our dear Lord God Almighty, into the kingdom of light. I praise you, God, for transformation over your people. God, I speak to marriages that are hurting. I speak to marriages that are broken. God, your word declares, whom you join together, let no man separate. God, remove every spirit of intervention that the enemy has intervened and brought demonic interference. God, we rebuke it now by the power of the blood of Jesus. We stand on your word. God, we know that you're not a man that you should Lie. You're not the son of man that you need to repent. God, you said it in your word, and we believe the word of the Lord. I release the word of the Lord tonight to restore broken families. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! 
those who are in debt, those on the verge of eviction, those who have gotten a negative result. Father God, tonight we call a turnaround. I prophesy a turnaround now yeah. in the name of Jesus. I yeah. decree and declare that fear will not overtake your people. God, yeah. I decree that anxiety and panic will not overtake your people. Doubt will not overtake your people. They will stand firm in their faith, yeah, God. Sure. Knowing that you alone are God. Yes, Jesus. Father God, I call in millions of dollars. Come yes. on, somebody. Receive it tonight. I call for yes. millions of dollars. Yes. God, we're in the place of the world transfer. For yes. your word declares that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. God, we call it in now millions of dollars. God, everybody on this line, I command them to become millionaires. I call money out of the ground. I call money out of the walls. Hidden yes. money, buried money, old money, yes. forgotten money. Free for millions. Find the people of God. Yes. Oh, God, I thank you that inheritances will be left to them. Yes. They will meet millionaires and one encounter will change their life. I prophesy yes. millionaire turnovers tonight, God. Yes. Ooh, in the name, name of Jesus. Jesus. No more worrying about the light, the yes. the mortgage, yes. the, the, the light, the, 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 the rent, the yes. car note. God, I thank yes. you. God, that your people are debt free. Yes. I decree jubilee over them. Yes. For the word of the Lord declares that on this in the seventh year that any debt that would owed was owed, they were to be released from. God, I decree jubilee anointing over them tonight. God, that they will be released from what is owed. Yes. God, I decree and declare supernatural happenings that will release them from debt. That yes. they can focus on kingdom agenda yes. in the name of in Jesus name Christ. Of Jesus. No longer will the wicked walk around as haughty hearted and proud with their nose up in the ear. Because God, you're about to strip the wicked. Huh? And you're about to bless the just. Huh? You're about to strip the wicked. Huh? And you're about to bless the righteous. Huh? Yes. Glory! Hallelujah! Oh, yeah, Rabbi, the name of Jesus. Ooh, we praise you for the wealth transfer. Oh, Rabbi, Jesus. Jesus. Those who are business owners, I call them business to double. I call them business to quadruple. I call them business to multiply by ten, by a hundred, by a thousand in the name of Jesus Christ. Ooh, they gonna have to hire help, God, because oh, Raman Saya, expansion is coming. Expansion of borders, expansion of clientele, expansion of customers, expansion of products, expansion of service, expansion in industry. Yes, God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty Yahweh. God, we surrender all to you already. Yes, God. God, we praise you for a new release of your power, a new release of your anointing, a new release of the glory of God. Yes. Let your glory rest on every home. Right yes. now, in the name of Jesus, yes. I come against accident and calamity. Devil, you will not ruin their vehicles. Yes. You will not take their life by untimely death. You will not hack them up in a car accident. Devil, yes. back up! In the name of Jesus, I cover every car under the blood of Jesus tonight. No accident, no calamity, no fender benders, no bumper to bumpers, no demonic police encounters. In the name of Jesus, especially in America, I come against racial prejudice, especially yes. in America. Yes. God, I pull down every stronghold. I decree and declare every believer, God, yes. every blood washed believer shall walk under a covering that will veil them from demonic police encounters. In yes. the name of Jesus, the their children of Jesus. shall be veiled from demonic police encounters. Yes. In the name of Jesus, I, I command the hand of the Lord to move and cover us, God. Cover us yes, from God. criminalistic manifestations yes, as we travel. I praise you for angelic escort over every home that is represented tonight. Yes. God, we thank you for victory now. We praise you for victory now. We glorify you for victory now. Oh, Rabbi Katana the Mansuri Yamandi. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. I hear the Lord saying yes. that He is moving on our behalf tonight. Yes. I hear the Lord saying, some of you on this line, about 10 or 15 of you, there is there, yes, about 15 of you. God said there's an anointing to evangelize that is coming over your life. You're gonna find yourself just sharing what you know of God, sharing what you uh, know of the word. And these people that you're talking to are gonna become enamored by what you're saying, and God will use you to lead them into the kingdom. Lead them. Lead them. Javina Gray, I see you going into some level of training. I see you in a room, and I see some other people. You're sitting at this this table, this desk, at this table. It, it looks like a hotel room setting with the long tables, and that's what it looks like. It could be a training room, but I, that's what I see. Amen. And I see a trainer or someone standing up in front. Amen. And I see a whiteboard and a marker in the person's hand, and I see them asking questions and giving directives. Javina, I want you to know that you're about to shine like never before. God says, "Hand is upon you, and His purpose is exacting everything." 
anything he purposed in your life. God said the enemy will not be able to steal from you. You belong to the Lord. God says everywhere you go, his eyes are upon you. Amen. His eyes are upon you. Sometimes you, you feel like, oh, somebody's watching me. Yes, God is watching you. And particularly for 2020. Because what God has for you, it will be expanded in your life. 2020 is a phenomenal year of manifestation in your life, Javina Gray. And God says to tell you that the purpose of the Lord, hallelujah, is going to move every enemy out of your pathway, mighty God. Or move every enemy that tries to contend with what God purposed for your life. Yes. I don't know about you, but I feel God in the room. Careful, my love. Amen. Jesus, yes. Don't fall down. Amen. Glory be to God. We, we got to be able to pull in the spirit. Yes. And so tonight, God, I cover every home. I cover our children, our spouses. Yes. I cover our possessions now. I cover our ministry. Oh God, with all of its contents, I cover them, God. Under the blood of Jesus, under the blanket of the blood tonight. And we will not be affected by the change economically because we're under the umbrella of Almighty God. Dr. Wayne Wiley, God bless you, man of God. Thank you for coming on the line. Listen, Dr. Wayne Wiley, I see the Lord blessing you. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord say, tell him, I'm going to bless him in the gates. Hallelujah. And God says to tell you, he, you're about to uh, dispossess the gates of your enemies. There's some people that came up against you in the former season. God said he's going to place you in higher positions than they sit in. There are many people that are watching your movements to see what is the next thing he's going to do. Why? Because you're gifted to hear from God in a way that nobody else can. God gives you creative ideas and witty inventions. God speaks to you in, 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 in genius ways and he shows you things. Amen. Even in the stars, even in things around you. And I hear the Lord say to tell you that he's pleased with the move that you have made. And open doors are over you. I see seven doors, uh, perpetual doors. You're about to walk through, man of God. And I hear the Lord say, get ready, pack your bags, because I see him launching you out into deep places. I see you going into new territory. I see you in the United States and Canada. And I see you in different parts of the Caribbean. Doors are going to be open for you in 2020, man of God, Dr. Wiley. What the enemy intended for evil, God said, he's already marked you. Amen. He's already marked you for the blessing of a lifetime. Hallelujah. And I see deeds being turned over to you. I see property being turned over to you. Uh, Dr. Wiley. You will be enriched by the hand of the Lord. God said, because you follow his mandate to a T and you don't deviate. So will he now what? Promote you. Oh, Rabbi In Jesus' name. Somebody help him give God glory on the line tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody hit that share button one more time. I want everybody share it on your page. Amen. Share yes. it on your timeline. Come on, somebody. Get the Hallelujah. devil back. There are some people that have found this live just in time. Some of you have saved lives. God bless you tonight, Yolanda. Amen. Love you, beloved. Of God bless you, Minister Newkirk. Love you, woman of God. Listen, there are some people that found this lie because you shared it. You don't know, but they inboxed me. They were on the verge of suicide. Because you shared, I was able to minister life and salvation and bring them back from the doldrums of hell. Hear me tonight. There were some people who needed a breakthrough and they needed someone to pray for them. Amen. Outside of the people who told them that they were praying. Amen. And so they connected. Whether I know them or not, because you share, I'm going to pray for them. Come on, somebody. Let's save, let's save some souls tonight. Come on, let's help somebody else tonight. Amen, somebody. We're about to get into this word. I know this word is going to be, like Bishop is saying, this is a rich word. Amen. I believe that this word is coming tonight to give you the mm that you need for this season. The topic that God gave me before he told me what the scripture was going to be, set the record straight. When he speaks to me, he speaks plainly. He said, your next topic is set the record straight. I wrote it down. And then the, the next day he gave me the name of, of, the, of, the, of the place in the Bible. And then he said, now study and bring it together. He said, I'm here, you know. And I mean, it's just like I have a teacher in the room. God is just with me. He just breathes through me. And listen, sometimes it, it aches me to get out of the prayer room, but I got to live life outside of a room. Amen, somebody. Set the record straight. Can somebody type that in there tonight? We come tonight to set the record straight. Hey, glory to God. We're turning to the book of Genesis. Chapter 39. Hallelujah. The power of the word is evident. May I decrease as the Lord God Almighty increase. And may you hear this word in your life be forever changed. In Jesus' name. Genesis chapter 39. Only 23 verses. Y'all know I love to read. And y'all love to listen. Amen. Come on. Let's go. We're going to get fed tonight. We're going to leave full. Glory to God. Set the record straight. And now Joseph had been taken down to Egypt. And Potiphar, an Egyptian officer of Pharaoh, the captain of the royal guard, brought him from the Ishmaelites who had taken him down there. And the Lord was with Joseph. 
And, and he, even though a slave, became a successful and prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And now his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to prosper or succeed in his hand. And so Joseph pleased Potiphar and found favor in his sight. And he served him as his personal servant. Let me tell you something. There's power in serving. Hallelujah, Jesus. Listen, your servant will get you promoted. Glory to God. He made Joseph overseer over his house. And he put all that he owned in Joseph's charge. And it happened that from the time that he made Joseph overseer in his house and put him in charge over all that he owned, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. So the Lord's blessing was on everything that Potiphar owned, in the house and in the field. And so Potiphar left all that he owned, yes God, in Joseph's charge. And with Joseph there, he did not need to pay attention to anything except the food he ate. Let me tell you something. When you have somebody in your life who knows how to do what God anointed them to do for you, you ain't got to do nothing but show up. Come on, somebody. Oh, God, send us more of those kinds of people. Amen? In the earth realm, uh, there are so many people carrying the weight of ministry. There are so many people, they're operating their business, but they don't have the right help. Glory to God. But you need to labor before God. I believe in God for a season that you will have the right help. That the labor and the effort and the struggle, that you won't see it, that you won't feel it. Amen. Glory to God. And so now, now Joseph was handsome and attractive in form and appearance. And then after a time, his master's wife looked at Joseph with desire. My God, always a devil in the house. And she said, lie with me. In other words, she said she wanted to sleep with him. Um, but he refused and said to his master's wife, look, with me in the house, my master does not concern himself with anything. He has put everything that he owns in my charge. He is not greater in this house than I am, nor has he kept anything from me except you, uh huh, because you are his wife. Then how could I do this great evil and sin against God and sin against your husband? And so it was that she spoke to Joseph persistently. My God, the devil just listened to me. And so she spoke to him persistently day after day, and he did not listen to her plea to lie beside her or be with her. And then it happened one day that Joseph went into the house to attend to his duties, and none of the men of the household were there in the house. And she caught Joseph by his outer robe saying, lie with me, my God. <laughs> but he left his robe in her hand and ran and got outside the house. And when she saw that he had left his robe in her hand and had run outside, she called to the men of her household and said to them, look at this. Your master has brought a Hebrew into this household to mock and insult us. And he came to lie with me and I screamed. And then when he heard me screaming, he left his robe with me and ran outside the house. And so she left Joseph's outer robe beside her mm -hmm, until uh, his master came home. And then she told her husband the same lion story, you know, the same story, amen, saying the Hebrew servant who you brought among us came to mock me and insult me. And then as soon as I raised my voice and screamed, he left his robe with me and ran outside the house. Verse 19 says, and when Joseph's master heard, glory to God, he heard these were the words of his wife. This is what he said. Uh, his wife was saying, this is the way your servant has treated me. His anger burned. And so Joseph's master took him and put him in the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were confined. So he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and extended loving kindness to him and gave him favor in the sight of the warden. The warden committed to Joseph's care, management, and all the prisoners who were in the prison so that whatever was done there, he was in charge of it. And the warden paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's care because the Lord was with him. Whatever Joseph did, the Lord made it to prosper. Mighty God. And so tonight, we're looking at Joseph. When we look at the name Joseph, it means what? Increase. I want somebody to type that in there, increase. The name Joseph means increase or God will add. And so now, we're all basically acquainted with Joseph, amen, and his life. And his life struggles, you know, being, even from his youth, being born into a family that one couldn't fathom the level of greatness that he was called to. Amen. No matter how uh, you're called to greatness, there's some people who are even in your bloodline, even in your family. Amen. They're always going to be the ones to count you out. Even at one point after Joseph had his second dream, his father and his mother were questioning, you're going to tell me now we're going to bow down to you? Come on now, you done, you done lost your mind. It's all right for you to say your brothers, amen, are going to bow down 
surrounding you. But it's another thing, another level for you to say, me is your father, your mother, your parents going to bow down to you. No, you want some other stuff. So number one, they couldn't fathom the level of greatness that he was called to. And number two, they and his brothers envied him because of the dreams that God gave him. Let me tell you something. God will put a dream in your heart. And every not every dream that God gives you is to share. I'm not talking about the dreams you go to sleep and dream and sleep in, in when you're having that um, nocturnal dream or that dream, that ram sleep. Amen. I'm talking about the dream of a vision in your heart. Something that God would put in your heart to do in the earth realm. Whether it's ministry, whether it's business, whether it's well, on whatever level, civic level, governmental level. Whatever God has given you to do in the earth, every vision, every dream that God gives you is not to be shared. Because you're going to find that your dream and your vision, listen, even, even before it manifests, it's going to create a place of envy and jealousy. Mm. And so now, Joseph, born to be sold, I'm, I'm calling him that tonight, he was born to be sold, amen? There was no other way around it. it was this, this was the theme over Joseph's life. But understand, although there was a plot to take his life, the plotters were powerless to do so. His brothers initially, when they, they saw him coming, they said, you know, let's just kill this dude. Let's just kill him and tell daddy, you know, when wild animals just snatch him and you know pieces left. Come on. And you know, but there was one brother that stood up and said, you know what, let's not touch his life. So even though the plotters were plotting, they were powerless to take Joseph's life because Joseph's life was in God's hands. Proverbs 19 and 21 love this scripture. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but mm. only the Lord's purpose shall prevail. Yeah. Let me tell you something. When God purpose of your has a purpose over your life, his purpose will prevail over the plotters every day every of the week. Time, Amen. And for you tonight, I want you to know it doesn't matter what the plotters plot. It doesn't matter how the plotters plot. It doesn't matter what the plotters plot. It doesn't matter when the plotters plot. It doesn't matter where the plotters plot. Glory to God. When they plot against you. Because only what God says will stand. Mm -hmm. Only what God wants will be able to prevail yes. over your life. Come on, somebody Hallelujah. type it in there. Set the record straight tonight. Set straight. Upon his arrival in a foreign land, Egypt, he was sold to Potiphar, who was the captain of the guard. He was, or, or in other words, captain of the guard, he was like the, the head of national security. Amen. He was the border protector. Glory to God. And so the plan of God over Joseph was to shift his location. Sometimes God has to shift you. Amen. Joseph just wanted to be loved by his family. He wanted to share his dream and have his dream be accepted. Amen. And approved by his father and his mother and his siblings. But that was not the case. And you're going to find out well, when you're called to greatness, you're going to be the one that will be outcast. You're going to be the one that they say nothing is going to come out. Listen, I grew up hearing, hearing that come out of my mother's mouth. You're going to be nothing. You're going to be just like your pa and nobody. Jesus. I grew up hearing her tell me all the negative things that any mother should never tell their, their daughter. Come on, somebody. I was told not how beautiful I was, but how I, I didn't look like this and I didn't look like the next thing. But look at me today. I'm fabulous. Y'all better say amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. And these are the things that when I have encounters with parents, I tell them straight up, speak life over your children. I pray a prayer over my son every day that I am alive. I pray God, Joshua will speak over his children the words that I speak over him, life. Huh? While he was yet in my womb, I spoke life over him. Huh? When he was being cut out of my body in C-section, I spoke life over him. Come on. When he grew up, he used to tell him, you're the smartest boy in the world. Come on. You're the most handsome boy in the world. Come on, you speak life over your babies. Come on. You speak life over them. Yes. You because the world going to dish them out some stuff that ain't right. It's your responsibility to speak life. Come on, somebody. So it didn't matter what was spoken over me. God's purpose prevailed. What you're looking at tonight is the prevailed purpose of God. Yes. Not my parents. Not my mother's mouth. It was God's power that positioned me where I am today. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. And so now we see from the eyes, from the eyes of mere men, Joseph had been downgraded from being a big dreamer to being a lowly slave. Now see, in the eyes of men, Bishop, that's what it looked like, right? Yes. But, but tonight I've come under the unction of the Almighty God through Ruach Kadesh, the Holy Ghost. I've come to set the record straight. Oh. God had a plan that was so big that Joseph had to be disguised as a lowly servant so that God could get him into the territory. Does this remind you of a bigger story? <laughs> Jesus is. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh, I feel God in that moment. Jesus' purpose was so great 
that God had to devise a plan to disguise Jesus. Come on. To bring him into the earth realm through the womb of a virgin. Position him in a lowly stable to make him king of glory. Come on. That he would be king and savior of the earth. Come on, somebody. You better hear me tonight. Sometimes God will put you in a place of disguise because he's trying to get you into new territory. Yeah. You better receive that tonight. Woo! Glory God. Somebody type in there, I'm getting new territory. Yes. My good God from Zion, mighty God. And because no one pays attention to a lowly slave, he was able to access the territory. Hey, Bishop, Amen. when you go to visit a millionaire's house, you're looking at everything and everyone else except the servants. Mm -hmm. If they had a male or female servant, if the person was well, black or white, you don't even know because you're too enamored by what you're seeing in the people that own the house. You aren't interested in the slave. You aren't interested in the servant. You understand? And that's exactly why God used that methodology to sneak him in under the radar. Hear me. If Joseph had gone down to Egypt, listen, God gave me a dream. That this can happen, I'm going to give me a job. No, that's not the ways of God. God will bring you in there subtly. He will bring you in there under the radar so the enemy cannot see or decipher what God is doing. Let me tell you something. The enemy always trying to peep what God is doing in your life. Oh, but there are times that God will do things under the radar. Uh, Can I tell you the dumbfounding yes. blessings are about to hit your life under the radar? Yes. The only time that people are going to hear about the blessing is when they drive by and see it. Woo! God, my. my good God, I just said something. It goes shy. And so now listen, many of you are questioning God about the level of entry that you're having to deal with in your own life in this moment, either pertaining to the job, right? God, I, I'm doing all the work and these people ain't doing nothing. Come on, y'all know what y'all just tell God. God, you got a bunch of lazy people on the job who are always talking and passing all the work to me. And I'm trying to be a kingdom citizen. I'm trying to do the right thing. And God, I own my own business. But God, look at these lazy workers you give me. Come on, somebody. And ain't nobody never measure up to the measure of God. And so you're complaining to the Lord. And even ministerial assignments you're complaining about. Oh, look at these people. Always trying to push up underneath the pastor. Always trying to get the pastor's favor. Oh, God. What a, yeah, you complain to God about the entry level position that you're in. But God wants you to go with the flow. Can I say it one more time? God wants you to just go with the flow. Come on. And smile through the process. Why? Because he's about to show up for you and set the record straight. Come on, somebody. If I was do I put my Holy Ghost hands together right there. Somebody type in there, amen. God will set the record straight. Ooh. And so now we see by verse 4, Joseph is not just slave. He's the head honcho. He's the house boss. He's the overseer over everything in Potiphar's house, except Potiphar's wife, of course. Amen. And, and it was because Joseph was in charge of Potiphar's house that God blessed Potiphar and his household. There were some people who are only blessed because of the blessing. Come on, somebody of God on your life that they tap into. I'm going to be real tonight. There are some people that are only experiencing the reign of God on their life because they are connected to your life. Come on. And come on. I'm being real tonight. The Bible says, this ain't me. The Bible tells me that the house of Potiphar was blessed because Joseph was in Potiphar's house. Woo! You're going to tell me now. Part of gonna promote this man and not see the level of blessing that's on Joseph's life. The devil lied. Oh no, no, no. He saw the level of blessing. That's why he said, you know what? I'm gonna promote this guy because the level of, of favor and influence over him is great. I'm gonna use that for my benefit. Come on, somebody. Glory be to God. Somebody type in there, set the record straight. So part of us saw that he could trust Joseph. Yeah, there's some people in your life, you know, you got to weigh out the balances. When I first meet people, I'm going to pray a long time even before we even have conversations outside of whatever. Come on, somebody, listen to me. <clears throat> but I, I don't trust easily, not in, after the season that I've come out of and being betrayed ministerially and having to deal with so many things. Listen, I have learned wisdom and so I'm strategic in my movements. Not every day I'm going to engage in conversation. Not every day I'm going to be available to everybody. Why? Because I am keeping myself in a place for you to see. Listen, I'm seeking God. No matter what it is, no matter how I favor some people, I'm going to be in a position. What? Seeking God. Come on, somebody. And so part of us saw now that he could trust Joseph. God first tests and proves us to see whether we're ready for the next level. Joseph was being tested. He got tested by being genuine, by being authentic to himself, by loving his family for real. 
and he found the greatest level of betrayal, not one of his brothers, all of his brothers. It was an evil consortium that came together against Joseph. It was a vile conspiracy that ended up in a plot against his life, but they couldn't touch his life because he belonged to God. Let me tell you all tonight, the enemy can try what he won't try, but he can't touch your life because your life belongs to God. Your future and destiny originates and belongs to God. Hear me tonight by the Spirit of the Lord. People may think you're blessed the way you are because of them, but I've come tonight to set the record straight. It's the other way around. They are blessed because of you. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody type that in there tonight. Come on. They're blessed because of you. Some of y'all on that job, them people just begin to prosper. Why? Because you on that job. The, the, the business begin to double. Why? Your influence is bringing new business. Your, your business, come on, your presence is bringing new business. Your presence in that place is causing the glory of God to light it up. Wherever the glory of the Lord is, it shall be what? I'm uh, blessed. The Bible says, uh, when the Ark of the Covenant rested in the house of Obed-Edom, that his entire house was blessed. So much so that it provoked David to get up and do what he should have done originally. Go and get the Ark of the Covenant and put it in its rightful place. The Ark of the Covenant represents the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of the Testimony. It represents the presence of God, that which is holy and sacred. Amen. And when we have the presence of God in our life, it brings the blessing of God wherever we go. And people go find out that when you leave their presence and when you leave that job, that the blessing shall depart with you. Ichabod, glory departed. Come on, somebody. I'm just telling the truth. And so can I tell you that when you're in a blessed place, the enemy will come to tempt you to lure you out of the position with God so you can lose your blessing. The enemy don't want you to be blessed. So he comes to try you, to test you with levels of temptation because he knows what your, the areas of, of your weakness are. He know how to get you. Come on, somebody. He know what you like. And so he'll bring that level of temptation. A lot of you women love to be complimented. And so when your husband ain't complimenting you, jump on social media and there go these dirty people from all over the world up in your inbox who full of spirits and who full of demonic moves. Amen, somebody who got demonic imps all up in their loins. Come on, hi, beautiful, how you doing? You just my type of woman, you just and that. Let me tell you something I didn't encounter a few years ago. I was single at the time, amen. And this man of God who was married jumped in my inbox. You know, and you know, he would often come in there and say stuff or would act like he was prophesying. I wasn't moved because he, you know, he was platonic. He was in a deep place of a prophet. He, he was just a, you know, saying things. You know, so he never moved me. But one day he said to me something different. He said, I've been watching you and you are my kind of woman. I love the way you are built. You are beautiful. I love your body and all kinds of different things he started to tell me. So I said, no, I must see you hallucinating. Let me go and get a glass of water. Let me sit down and read this again. So I came back and I looked at it, you know, and I said, this man got to be crazy. So I went back at his page. I said, God, you show me the spirit he mattered. And I see two lines, which means two children. So I said, okay, God, let me go here and look. And I see him and his wife and I, you know, cheesing up after church and things. And this man is in ministry representing his father, who is over a big conglomerate in the United States. So I went back to my inbox. And I said to him, you foul demon from the pits of the, the bottom of the pits of hell. I said, I know I don't look desperate. I'm a woman of God and I live a consecrated life. I said, don't you ever step to me again or I will screenshot this conversation and send it to your wife. You got to know, we have to set a standard in Zion. It's time for us as people of God to set the record straight. There should be no woman who say you go to church and you know God. And you raised in a godly house and you are just snatching up other people's husband. Uh -oh. Use a crafty alley. Oh, Jesus. Huh? If the man is still married, you cannot be dating him until he is fully divorced. Huh? Some of y'all is encouraging these men to leave their wives broken up, doing a bunch of mess. Some of y'all men are so, so weak spiritually that you fall for this nonsense. <coughs> I've seen great men and women of God fall <coughs> because of the flesh. The Bible tells us nothing good. <clears throat> dwells in the flesh and you gotta be in that place in God where you are prayed up come on somebody the mightiest of the mighty are fallen huh? so I'm careful about my movements pertaining to my husband and how we move and how I move and how wives move uh, you don't mind to come in my inbox because I will surely scatter your business all across the social media huh? 
And guess what? Years later, now we're going to send him another message. Must he, he deleted everything. So we must he thought, when he deleted everything, everything on me deleted. I so, so recently he sent another message, but, oh, God bless you, woman of God. Um, um, we can link up and do something. I said, you foul demon from hell. I said, scatterize. I said, how are you getting my inbox? I said, I thought I unfriended you. You, you got to set the record straight. You got to draw the line. You can't be so desperate for attention that you jump in on social media looking to be enamored and finding um, tongues of flattery from these demons. Huh? They guest houses and guest hotels for demons. If they're on there, they married and they trying to find another woman. Huh? And these men who looking for men, foul demons from hell. And these women looking for, for women. Huh? Cleanse your way before the Lord. Unrighteous man, cleanse your thoughts. It begins in the mind. Huh? May God create in you a clean up, renew your mind. You need to renew your mind with the washing of the regeneration of the word of God. Thank you, my beloved. God bless you. Listen, you got to know of a truth. When God calls us, he calls us to a standard. What is it called? Holiness. Holiness is still right, man. Come on, somebody. Holiness is still right. The church is falling away because we refuse to, to show the young people the right way. And when they jump up getting pregnant out of wedlock, then we got something to say. Ain't nothing to say. You wasn't the standard when you needed to be. You wasn't the mother, the father you needed to be. Come on, somebody. Huh? Glory to God. Let me tell you something. Children are going to do what they're going to do. But I can, I can speak from my own experience. And let me speak for me. I like to speak for people. Right? Let me speak for me. Right? I came up an only child and I suffered like a child in a house with plenty in there. Okay? I did not have the love of my mother. Huh? I didn't have the comfort of a mother and I couldn't run to my mother with nothing. In college, I ended up pregnant. And knowing who my mother was, I certainly was not going to go home and tell my mommy I'm pregnant. Huh? You know what ended up happening? I ended up having an abortion. All right? And there are many of you on this line right now, you have been in the same place that I've been in. Right? And every, let me tell you something, after I got saved and I gave my heart to God, I cried endlessly. The Holy Spirit dealt with me for the decision that I made. <sighs> and I prayed and I said, God, if you don't give me any other children, just give me the baby that I lost. Give me it back. From that time then I only had one amen. <laughs> I believe God gave me my baby back. Praise the name of the Lord. But we as parents, we need to gird our children. We need to guard our children. We need to fight for their lives. Come, come on, somebody. Because the devil is after our children. Setting up our daughters on birth control is not the answer. <coughs> Giving our sons condoms and telling them, be safe out there, my son, is not the answer. The answer is explaining to them the ways of the Lord. And listen, it may not be easy, but it's going to be worth it. I walk with hundreds of my sons and daughters all over this globe. You can resist the, the temptations of the flesh. You don't have to give in to the whims of the flesh. You can control it, just like you control every other facet of your life. But it takes a conscientious decision. Huh? Every young lady that I meet now that, that has found themselves in the place that I was in when I was in college, you know what I encourage them to do? Whatever you do, don't have an abortion. Whatever you do, don't, don't kill that baby. Because there's purpose over that baby's life. And you're going to suffer for it. You're going to have dreams and nightmares. I know I did. I know I did. I'm going to tell you tonight, you are on this line. And you are in that place. You better keep that baby. Hear me tonight. Huh? Don't listen to your friends. Come on, somebody. There's purpose over your life. There's purpose over the baby you're carrying. God will provide for you in that baby. There was a very close friend of mine who got pregnant, didn't want the baby. And I tell her, listen, oh, God. She came to me. She said, I, I can have it. I said, no, don't you ever do that. I said, if it comes to that, I said, have that baby. I said, go someplace, have the baby, give me the baby. As far as they know, I did not baby. At the end of the day, when that baby came out, she changed her mind. Oh, God, that was a nice baby. She changed her mind. She said, I decided I'm going to keep him. Huh? But because we had a conversation, it got to a place where she could birth the baby and see that baby, fall in love with that baby. Come on, somebody. There is purpose. When I see stories on Facebook, people throwing babies in the garbage and put them in plastic bags. My God, that is, listen, I begin to cry out to the Lord. Huh? We as people of God, there is an agenda for you to pray about. I have, I have the abortion stuff on my agenda. Why? I suffered through it. When if I had the support of my parent, I would not have had to go through that. I didn't have it. I didn't have it. Huh? And those of you who are single mothers and you're young or whatever, let me tell you something, you're going to make it. Because I was married when I had my son, but I ended up a single mother. And I had to press through those moments. You're going to make it. You're not going to have to call Henry or Tom or Steve. Listen, you call on Jesus. He's all that you need. Come on, somebody. Come on, Bishop. Amen. 
He's all that you need tonight. Yes. He is your provider. Yes. And you, you're going to become the money magnet. You're going to yes. be the place of blessing. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't give up your baby. I mean, God, I'm, spe I'm speaking to somebody tonight. Yes, somebody. Got Don't give up that baby, man. If you can inbox me and Bishop, we'll take the baby. Oh, Lord. Baby, we'll take that baby. Ministry demands that we love them. Amen. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Listen here, you talking about my bunny. So now she got a rabbit, now she calling in the baby. Yes. Huh? But we got to love. We got to be the love of God in the earth realm. We got to show them the ways of God. I didn't know any better. I didn't have nobody to love me through my pain. You know, I only had condemnation. I only had vile words thrown at me. I didn't have arms of love and comfort that I can run to. So if I can be the arms of love and comfort for somebody else, I'm going to be that. Come on, somebody. I'm going to run. I'm going to say, listen, your daughter, no matter what has happened, listen, I'm going to be grand. I'm going to be grandmama. Come on, I'm going to love you. I'm going to do whatever I can do with that baby. Come on. Uh, listen to me. I'm going to walk with you. Come on. My, my spiritual daughters and my spiritual sons know. I don't just throw it at you. I walk with you. Sometimes my life get busy. I can't do the one-on-one -on -one all the time. But I do it as much as I can. And guess what? I walk with them. I pray for them daily. I cover them. God bless you, Wayne Bartlett. Lady did my wedding cake. Amen. Excellent baker. Love you. Glory be to God. Getting back into this word. And so just like Joseph, you have to open up your mouth and bluntly inform the devil. Listen, God has been too good to me for me to turn around and betray his trust now. Amen. Too many people backsliding too easily and for what? For nothing. Let me tell you something. It's never worth going back on God. It's never worth picking up sin where, where you found it. Leave it where it is. Glory be to God. It's when God has established you that the enemy comes in like a flood. I'm going to be honest with you. People of God, you better lift up God's standard against the wiles of the enemy. Only God's standard will work. We need God's standard, amen? You gotta be bold about your position. Come on and say, what set the record straight? Yes. Going back into the world is not an option. You better set the record straight. Yes. Compromising your faith in God to accommodate other people's sin is not an option. You better set the record straight. Yes. Abandoning the will of God to make contrary fleshy decisions is not an option. Set the record straight. And y'all women, listen, you're married to the man and he wanna be having sex with you whatever. Yeah, you're in a committed relationship. But listen, your body does not belong to him. He's a thief. He's a thief. He's stealing. Huh? Stolen waters are sweet. Hmm? Huh? That's what the Bible says, but it's bitter in the belly. Because you don't please in God when you fornicate and having fornicative sex. Oh, it's an orgasmic experience. Ah, but after that, you've fallen into sin. And then you've got to what, repent all over again. My God, possess your body as a vessel of honor. And if he can't honor you as a woman of God, and you can't have listen, what kind of husband he could be anyway? I'm just being real with you. Hola. No, habla espanol. <laughs> Come on, somebody. What kind of husband is he going to be? Huh? It's just like you training a child. He's a man who can't control his whims, his appetites, and his desires. He got a hard time serving God, even after you marry him, because he can't control the flesh. So which means that well, if, if you say no as his wife, doesn't mean he's going to call Tommy. If you call Sally, you call Jean, because you don't give him what he wanted in the midnight. Uh-oh, because he can't control his fleshly desires. You got to see these things in the long range. Can I help some women of God tonight? Can I help you not to put up with these jokers anymore? Can I help you not to put up with these slack-ripping jokers? Come on, somebody. Huh? Let go to hero. I let go to zero and pick up a hero. That's what they say watch mm -hmm. night. Yeah, that's what it is. I don't know matter what you want to say for my husband. He's a hero. He's a hero, buddy. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, he married his wife. Uh, so we can be pure before the Lord. Uh, you want to hold up on this thing, hold up on this thing forever and ever and ever. Uh, I mean, these big ceremony that don't even count. And then the day you broke and people still laughing at all the things you put together. Uh-oh. Uh, you better do what me and Bishop do. Go in front of the Lord and the church and say, yes, Lord, amen. Love you, love you. Married. Praise God. Huh? Because everything else don't make no sense. Huh? Matrimony is holy. Holy matrimony, that's what you're aiming for. Not wedding. Uh-oh. Stepping down into lower places spiritually to make other people <laughs> feel comfortable. Right? Or other people who, who don't have a desire toward God or don't have any spiritual ambition feel more comfortable uh, uh, in their low place is not an option. You better set the record straight. Stop trying to make people who ain't aspiring to be nothing in God comfortable. 
Separate yourself from those kind of people. They don't want more. Leave them on the low levels that they want to sit in. But you aspire to greatness in God. It's time to level up. Amen. Come on, somebody type in there. Set the record straight. And type in it right tonight. And so now you got to let the enemy know that what you belong to God. What? Wholeheartedly. And to him only will you serve. Come on. It's time for us as saints to set the record straight. Giving into the wilds of the enemy will cause you to lose what? Big time. I can be honest with you. So we see now, Joseph set the God standard and spoke up boldly to the adulterous wife of Potiphar who wanted him to backslide on God for a fleeting momentary fleshly desire. Joseph set the record straight. Uh, and because he stood with a standard, he was cast into prison because of lies. He was wrongfully accused. But even in prison, he prospered. This prison, you know what it represents? It represents the attempt of the enemy to bind you and deter you from destiny. See, the devil knew the dreams already. So he figured if he could get Joseph imprisoned, what he would do? He would get Joseph's dream not to come to pass. Let me tell you something. The enemy is ignorant. He knows how to use facts against you. But can I tell you, there's no facts that can move against the supernatural intervention of the hand of God. It will crush the enemy head. Huh? Put your foot on the head and the neck of that serpent and crush the head in the name of Yeshua Messiah. Huh? you got to come to that place that you see, oh, the enemy, because I set the standard in God, now the enemy want to deter me from destiny. But the enemy, listen, he can only deter for so long. Huh? Even on lockdown, Joseph prospered, the Bible said. Huh? And tonight I'm on divine assignment of Almighty God to tell you, God say he's going to set the record straight. That no matter what the enemy throws at you in this season, you're going to prosper. I'm going to say that one more time. No matter what the enemy throws at you this season, you're going to prosper. Nothing will be able to stop the, pro the prosperity of God over your life. Come on. In verse 23, it says, the Lord made him to prosper. That's the last verse in chapter 39. And the Lord made him to prosper. I want you tonight to put your name in there. Call your name. Type it in there. And the Lord made Rochelle Graham to prosper. Come on, Bishop. Amen. And the Lord made Bishop Graham to prosper. Come on. And the Lord made Alan Bell to prosper. And the Lord made Dewan, Dequan McIntosh to prosper. And the Lord made Brianna Simonet to prosper. And the Lord made Anita Allen to prosper. And the Lord made Tracy Williams to prosper. And the Lord made Deidre Hall to prosper. And the Lord made Monette Virgil to prosper. And the Lord made Latoya Gatson to prosper. And the Lord made Chanda Roberts to prosper. And the Lord made Renee Delavo to prosper. Hallelujah. Come on, come on somebody. The Lord made you to prosper. You're going to prosper and continue prospering until you become very prosperous. Come on, somebody. The Isaiah Kanoni. You go prosper. No matter what the enemy, hallelujah. No matter what the enemy tries. They may have betrayed you in the former season, but to set the record straight, it was God moving them out of your life. Forgive them and let them go. You know, they left you for dead, but to set the record straight, God wanted to bless you without them. Can I tell you tonight? God has come to set the record straight. They, they opened their mouths and lied on you to make themselves look good the way Potiphar's wife did to Joseph. But to set the record straight, God was repositioning you for the takeover. Woman of God, what are you saying? Understand now that some two years later, listen, that's why I'm telling y'all don't worry about time. Don't worry about time. God got something great at the end of the time for you. Understand now that some two years later, Pharaoh had a dream. This is higher than Potiphar now. This is the one that ruled in the land. Potiphar was only in charge of national security. Now, two years later, listen, as he was serving and prospering in the walls of what they named prison, listen, God was preparing him for promotion. And so now, two years later, Pharaoh had a dream and favor found Joseph and God caused him to be positioned to, to, to what? Second in command in Egypt. Now, time don't matter <coughs> when God moves for you. Time don't matter when manifestation comes for you. You better hear me tonight. Genesis chapter 41. It rehearses the entire scenario. But I'm going to hit these two verses. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Since your God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and clear-headed as you are. You shall have charge over my house, and all people shall be governed according to your word and pay respect to you with reference, with reverence, submission, and obedience. Only in matters of the throne will I be greater than you in Egypt. God promoted him to being second highest power 
place of power control in a land named Egypt, a foreign land to him. Huh? Because he waited on God. Because he walked through his process. Huh? Because he allowed God to step in and set the record straight. Some of y'all like to rectify situations. Sometimes y'all like to clarify when y'all hear about somebody say something. Y'all gotta call and make sure they get the facts from you. Stop it! In 2020. Whenever they talking, let them talk it. Because that tongue that the Bible says, by your words you are justified. By your words you are condemned. The Bible says you are snared by the words of your mouth. They gonna walk into a snare concerning you. And the evil they pronounce against you with their tongue, their tongue will fall upon themselves. Let them talk. Stop trying to rectify it. Stop trying to set the record straight. Step back. Let God set the record straight tonight. Come on, somebody. God wants to set the record straight for you. Come on, somebody. Let people say what they're going to say. They're going to say what they're going to say anyway. Till they know any better. Till they tie getting slammed upside their head. And the Holy Ghost slammed. Stop talking about my son. Stop talking about my son. Come on, Stop talking about my daughter. Come on. Get slapped on the side. Wake up with a headache. Oh, God. I got a headache. Get up with God. Slapping you in the night. Stop talking about his anointed people. <laughs> You better understand God is a protector of that which is his own. That's you. That's me. That's we. That's us. Come on, somebody. Those of you on the line tonight, or you, you're in a room, or this is this broadcast is being replayed, and you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior in this moment, I invite you, join me at the virtual altar of the Lord God, where all you need to do is confess with your mouth, believe with your heart, the Lord Jesus, let's pray. Come on, say, Father God, I repent of all my sins. Father, wash me, cleanse me, make me whole. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a brand new day. I renounce the things that I used to do. I renounce the person I used to be. God, make me brand new in you. In Jesus' name. You said that prayer. You've been translated. You've been transferred. You've been moved. Hallelujah. From one level to another. And from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. It's your time to move forward. Find yourself in a Bible-based church teaching the word of the Lord unadulteratedly. No religion. No lines. Just the power of God to flow by the spirit of the Lord. I bless God for all of you tonight, amen, that are on this line, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And I call the Lord God to bless you. Sha Shakela Davis, Shakela Davis, 2020. God says he's about to lead you and guide you by the way that you should go. Amen, and I see you filling out a, an application and co-signing with your husband. This is for a home. This is for a home. No one has ever lived in this home before. This is a brand new home. It's already built. You're not going to have to build it. So God is going to pre-qualify you and give you favor to move forward, to own your own in this season. Glory to God. And I, I see you saying to the Lord, I really need to reposition this so I can have this enough to do this and this for, for this and that. You know, and God said the finances are going to begin to flow. By the 15th of February, things are going to shift concerning the finances. And I see a broadening, amen, a broadening and a stretching and God allowing more monies to come in. And I hear the Lord say, rest in him. Amen. Rest in him. Amen. Stop overthinking situations. He is moving on your behalf. Glory be to God tonight. Dwayne Johnson, I hear the Lord say in blessing, he will bless you. And in multiplying, he will multiply you. God say your weight has not been in vain. You have been on the cusp of doing so much in the former seasons. But God says in this season, he's going to give you a new opportunity to move forward. A new day. And I see you connecting with investors that are foreign. And God will give you favor for expansion of territory. I see entrepreneurial success. You being marked for it in this season. God said what the enemy did to deter you last time, it will not work. And I see you <clears throat> in a lawyer's office. And I see determinations or and negotiations over how things will be done. God said he's going to give you supernatural wisdom. Amen. Some of the things you're never going to hear about before, but he's going to give you the quickening in your spirit. You're going to catch it in a moment. You're going to catch it. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Morning Burroughs continue to press in the Lord. God said to tell you he's pleased with you. You have been pressing. My good God from Zion. Hallelujah. And it's, it, it's as if you're pushing this thing over the precipice and it's about to fall over. Amen. And this thing represents the weight. It's, this thing represents the demonic influence that will come against your house and your children and it's not you're pushing and you're pressing amen and listen this thing is about to hit the precipice and fall over never again to be set up in your life or in your bloodline and, and, and the generational curses have been broken only the blessings now will begin to flow it will begin to flow and flow freely and then I see you even going in that looks like at the place of the water and just talking to the Lord because he's going to give you the desires of your heart and I see Holy Ghost boldness coming upon you. There's some things that God is going to show you. And you're going to share it with everybody. 
And the way you're going to take it's going to come up with authority. It's a new level for you. Money borrows, watch God move all around your life. I decree blessings over you guys tonight. <clears throat> this word has been a blessing. The word has gone forth. I'm going to tell you when the word goes forward, it's always important to put a seed in the ground. I'm going to ask you tonight to sow a seed of $39. $39. We're going to go with the triune God and the triune God times three. We're going to sow a seed. $39. See, that's small things for some of you. Some of you got so much you want to bless with 390 Go ahead and multiply that by 10. Amen. But as the Lord has blessed you, the Lord has prospered you. God loves a cheerful giver. So I want you to sow. Amen. And believe God for your breakthrough. Everyone that sows a seed knows the very next day they get a prayer in their inbox. <clears throat> Amen. A personalized prayer. And of course, God uses me to pray prophetically over your life, even as I pray. And so there'll be things that will be unveiled to you that were not formally known because you're going to have that one-on-one -on -one in that moment. So tonight, I say to you, put the, the seed in the ground because the enemy can fight everything else but the seed. So for your husband tonight, you need deliverance. So for your children that need deliverance, put the name on that seed and say, God, this is for my son. This is for my daughter. This is for my husband. This is for my wife. This is for my mother. This is for my father. This is for my family. Listen, it's time for us to rise up so that God could set the record straight. I know that God has blessed your life tonight. Bishop, you have anything you want to share with the people? My husband is tired. And so those of you, before you go to bed, please call his name before the Lord, that God would heal him of all the aches and pains. You know, he had a full hip replacement surgery on his right hip. And when he overexerts himself, there is agony in the night. Brother Alan Bell, we bless God for you. You are a blessing all the time. We just love you. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Minister Tracy Williams. She posted it there. She said, people of God, sow your $39 seed. Amen. It's a small seed to sow. Amen. For the miracles that will come into your life. Let me tell you something. Sometimes I'm sleeping and God is putting me on the hearts of people. There's a woman of God that inboxed me one time and she said, listen, woman of God, I was in worship and the Lord said to me, sow $500 seed. Whoa. And she got up and she sowed that seed. Let me tell you something. God will tell people <clears throat> to sow based on what they're going through because God knows what he's trying to get to them. There's going to come a point in time. God bless you, Minister Rachel. No, I'll be happy to know you're safe. Love you. Amen. Um, there, there's going to be times when you're going to be glad you put a seed in the ground. Because the seed will protect your family. It will cover your children. It'll, it'll get, get you ready for that next level of harvest. I don't know about you, but I prophesy over you tonight the blessing of Amos 9 and 13. That the reaper will overtake the sower in your life. You're going to have so much coming in. You will have more coming in than you have going out. In Jesus' name, we bless God for you. Thank you for joining us here tonight on Righteous Remnant Revelated Ramah. We'll be back next week, Tuesday, by the will of God, by God's grace. Amen. And I thank God for you tonight. Lift a standard so that God can set the record straight. I love all you them. Bishop, say good night. Good night. Love everyone. We're praying. Amen. We're praying. Honey, you have to get up and turn it off. Cause... Uh oh. <laughs> Just press the finish button. <laughs> Love you so much.